So next we'll look at vertical motion. In this case we have no motion along the x direction. All the motion is along the y direction. And this diagram here shows the force balance for a particle falling vertically. So we're imagining that y is increasing going down in this case. So we have a y velocity into the positive direction. There's a force of gravity, mg, pulling into the positive y direction. And then, of course, the force of air resistance resists the motion, and so it points up into the negative y direction. And so here's our dynamical equation. The acceleration in the y direction is the sum of the gravity, which again pulls into the positive y direction, and the uh, force of air resistance, which points upward into the negative y direction. Since the force of gravity and the air resistance point in opposite directions, it's possible for the two forces to actually cancel out. You can see that if the velocity in the y direction were large enough, then mg would be exactly equal to b times vy, and you could end up with a case in which there is no net acceleration. In other words, these two accelerations actually cancel out. The velocity at which that occurs is called the terminal velocity. And in the case of linear air resistance, it's simply given as the ratio of the weight mg for the falling projectile divided through by the constant b. And so you can see, for example, if you have a particle with a particularly large mass, it will have a very large terminal velocity. On the other hand, as b gets larger and larger, we'll find that the terminal velocity gets smaller and smaller. And as we'll see later, b is actually related to the size of the object. So if you have an object with a fixed mass but a larger and larger size, its terminal velocity as it falls through the fluid will actually get smaller and smaller. So taking this definition for the terminal velocity, we can rewrite the weight mg as the product of b and the terminal velocity. And that allows us to rewrite the dynamical equation. So now we have a new equation, which is equivalent to the old version. m times vy dot is just equal to negative b times the difference between the velocity vy and the terminal velocity. So you can see in the case that the velocity vy is larger than the terminal velocity, we'll have a negative acceleration, which means that the object starts out going very quickly, but then air resistance slows it down. In the case that the initial velocity vy is smaller than the terminal velocity, you can see that we will have a positive acceleration, and so this will be a projectile that starts out falling slowly, but then its velocity will quickly increase. Divide both sides through by the mass m. Take the term from the right-hand side proportional to the velocity vy to the left-hand side, and you get the bottom equation here. And remember, in our previous analysis, we defined a time scale tau to be equal to the mass divided by the constant b. And so we'll redo that here. And so that allows us to rewrite the equation. So we get vy dot plus vy over this time scale tau. That's equal to the velocity, the terminal velocity, over the time scale tau. We can solve this differential equation by multiplying both sides through by an integrating factor, e to the t over tau. And then you get the bottom equation, which turns the left-hand side of our equation into a time derivative of e to the t over tau times the velocity vy. That's going to be equal to 1 over tau times e to the t over tau times the terminal velocity. So then we can integrate this equation. That's the equation at the far right in the middle of the screen. And what you end up getting is e to the t over tau times vy of t minus e to the 0 over tau. So remember, we're integrating from t equals 0 up to some time t. e to the t's, uh, excuse me, e to the 0 over tau times vy uh, for t equals 0. Of course, e to the 0 is just 1. And so all this becomes e to the t over tau times vy time of t minus vy of 0. This is equal to the right-hand side of our original equation, which is shown here at the bottom when you do the integral, e to the t over tau minus 1, all of that times the terminal velocity. So bringing it all together, we get the top line, e to the t over tau times vy of t minus the initial velocity, vy0. That's equal to this big thing in parentheses, e to the t over tau minus 1, all times the terminal velocity. Remember, we're interested in solving for vy of t, so we take everything else to the right-hand side and we get the bottommost expression. Vy of t is equal to the initial velocity 
times an exponential factor plus 1 minus this exponential factor, all of that times the terminal velocity. And so we'll see that this has some really interesting uh, consequences for the way in which the velocity evolves with time. For instance, at t equals 0, if we plug in t equals 0 to the right-hand side of our equation, what we find is we get the initial velocity times e to the 0, so that's just 1, plus this term of parentheses is now 1 minus e to the 0. e to the 0 is, of course, 1. And so this second term, 1 minus e to the 0, that becomes 0. So the terminal velocity drops out, and we, we recover our initial condition. Vy at t equals 0 is just Vy comma 0. We see a more interesting behavior for t going to infinity. So if we wait a long, long time, what happens, we see, is that e to the minus t over tau, as t goes to infinity, that becomes 0. That gets closer and closer to 0. And so that right-hand side, we can see that the term proportional to the initial velocity, vy naught, that's times e to the minus t over tau, that's going to go to 0. So that means that in the limit as t goes to infinity, the initial velocity does not contribute. On the other hand, the other term, the 1 minus e to the minus t over tau times the terminal velocity, we can see that as t goes to infinity, that e to the minus t over tau, that goes to 0. And so this whole second term becomes 1 times the terminal velocity. And so this has the interesting consequence that as t goes to infinity, the y velocity approaches the terminal velocity. In fact, that's why we call it the terminal velocity. No matter what the original velocity is, the velocity will eventually approach the terminal velocity. And so, for instance, if we start out with an initial velocity greater than the terminal velocity, we get an evolution that looks like this. This is a plot of the evolution of our velocity. So you can see that the velocity starts out at vy comma zero and asymptotically approaches the terminal velocity. And coming back to our original differential equation, we can see exactly why this is. The right-hand side of the differential equation, in the case that vy is greater than the terminal velocity, that right-hand side is going to have a negative sign. And so vy dot is going to be negative. So the velocity will start out big and go to smaller values. And this contrasts with the case in which we start out with a velocity less than the terminal velocity. In this case, our solution tells us we will start at vy naught and asymptotically approach the terminal velocity. And that behavior is apparent in the original differential equation. In this case, we have a vy which is less than the terminal velocity. And so the right-hand side of this equation is positive. What's happening here basically is gravity accelerates the projectile until the linear air resistance is large enough to balance the gravitational acceleration. Coming back to the physical significance of the time scale tau, this plot shows the case that we start with a zero initial velocity. So in this case, there's no air resistance at the beginning, and so gravity has a free hand to accelerate the projectile to large velocities. Of course, eventually the velocity gets large enough that the air resistance can balance the force of gravity, and so the velocity asymptotically approaches the terminal velocity. You can see, however, that the time scale tau plays an important role here after one time scale tau, after t is equal to tau, the velocity reaches 63% of the terminal velocity. The book has a nice table showing the relationships between times and how close a falling projectile approaches the terminal velocity. So in principle, of course, the projectile never technically reaches the terminal velocity. It's always asymptotically approaching that value. But if you wait long enough, it will be close enough to the terminal velocity that it may as well be there. And so the time scale over which that happens is set by tau. We'll see a lot of problems this semester in which there's an exponential increase or decrease in some dynamical behavior and we'll always have some sort of time scale associated with it. And so this is a useful way of sort of getting a sense for how long it takes for something to happen, even if the system is asymptotically approaching a particular state.